area. This meeting is being recorded. All right. Um, so I, positions that I've held, um, I've obviously I've been a, a club president, mm -hmm. I'm the immediate past district governor of uh, 7690. Um, membership is a, a huge passion of mine. Um, I've been serving as an uh, innovative uh, club chair um, for uh, 7690 and was uh, also given this opportunity to uh, join the public image team, um, which I am uh, thrilled to do. Um, I don't know if you guys can see my shirt. Uh, innovative club chair, so I'll, I'll wrap that as much as possible. Um, I, I was asked to um, step in and uh, talk a little bit about um, you know, sort of the relationship uh, between public image and uh, membership, um, specifically Chris, you got to unmute. You're muted. Okay, I'm gonna try some advanced trickery here with uh, sharing my screen. So give me a second. All right, so hopefully everybody can uh, see and hear me. Um, so I'm gonna start this off by, you know, and, and maybe a, uh, what will seemingly be a curious way. Um, the first thing I'm going to talk about is uh, not Rotary. I'm going to talk about Coca-Cola, you know, which um, may seem like a, a strange way to start a talk on uh, membership and public image. Um, but I, I love business. I love uh, learning about um, company profiles. Um, and, you know, the reason I'm opening with Coca-Cola is, uh, you know, they are the, uh, or it is the largest uh, soft drink manufacturer in the world. Uh, they're actually the 30th most valuable company in the world. Um, huge marketing team. Uh, they actually use uh, not only their own marketing team, but uh, more than a dozen outside uh, marketing firms. Um, they spend over $4 billion a year in marketing. And their focus really in, in their marketing has nothing to do with their product. Uh, you know, they, they, don't, they don't really um, sell the, you know, the taste necessarily of their product. They, they sell, uh, as they would say, uh, happiness in a bottle. Um, so why am I talking about Coke? They are a 130 year old company. And you heard that right. Um, you know, I, we, we would be hard pressed to uh, think of too many companies that are 130 years old. And somehow over 130 years, they've stayed relevant and stayed in the American consciousness. One figure that uh, really struck me was that Coca-Cola has 90.5% brand loyalty. In other words, once they get a customer, they keep 90.5%. And if you translate that to uh, retention in Rotary, um, they are, are crushing our retention numbers, I, you know, in, in terms of, of being able to keep their customer. Um, and, you know, I, you, you have to ask yourself why and how we can, as Rotarians and, uh, you know, as, as Rotary clubs, um, take lessons from uh, entities that do it better. They are recognized by 94% of everyone in the world. So if you think about that, if you ask uh, 100 people all over the planet, if they recognize Coca-Cola, 94 of them are going to say yes, which is um, absolutely remarkable. I want to show you guys, um, and, and you guys are going to recognize this stuff. You know, it, this is just... Um, these images are, are ubiquitous. They're, they're things that, you know, images that you've seen over and over again. You can't beat the real thing. You've got, I mean, somehow a, a beverage that's served cold is synonymous with Christmas. I mean, everybody knows the, you know, the, the Norman Rockwell, uh, Santa Claus tie-in. Um, I mean, they're, you know, huge advertising push uh, over the winter. Um, everybody knows these guys, the, uh, the polar bears, um, you know, really cute digital marketing campaign. And, and we all know, you know this tagline, taste the feeling. And the feelings uh, that that you know, kind of imagery invokes. So 
rhetorical question, Tom. Um, you know, if uh, if we had more time and you know like we could adequately facilitate, I'd throw it out to the audience. But let's just keep it rhetorical for the time being. What if Coca Cola, instead of messaging their happiness in a bottle, what if they just focused on manufacturing and their delivery logistics and, and all the, the things that are you know, super company specific? What if they, they didn't really pay attention to their public image? Um, I would submit to you that Coca-Cola um, would not enjoy uh, the 90.5% uh, retention rate that they have um, of their customers. And they certainly would not have been around for uh, 100 or you know more than 130 years. So we're going to shift gears and talk about Rotary membership. Um, you know, this point is driven home all the time in uh, membership specific meetings. Uh, you know, we have as a zone attrition at about 15 and a half percent. Attraction on average is around 12.1%. And we all know um, that that simply is not uh, sustainable um, over a long period of time. I, and we have, um, you know, unfortunately continued to lose members. And we know the retention basics. We know that our members must be engaged. Now, you know, translating that to, uh, you know, getting that message across to um, clubs all over our zone and all over Rotary is, is of course difficult. We know that member needs have to be met early and often. We know that we have to meet our member needs to network, our member needs to fellowship and give our members opportunities to serve. We know that and we know we have to be better at messaging to people that aren't Rotarians yet. Here's some numbers that you might not know. Um, and these are, are particularly alarming, um, you know, now that um, I, or I'm about to be on the Zone Public Image team, um, you know, I, I spent quite a bit of time over the last couple of days uh, just poking around DACVB in various districts and, and looking at, um, you know, the leadership positions um, and more, you know, more pointedly, the leadership positions that are vacant. Guys, we have less than 25% of our clubs even have a public image chair. I mean, let that sink in for a second. And even at the district level, and certainly at the club level, public image chairs are generally not executive committee level positions. In other words, public image doesn't really have a seat at the table yet. So, you know, my next step in, in analyzing this was like, okay, if, you know, public image really has the import that uh, we, you know, are told that it does and the focus that it should have, um, you know, what does Rotary say about it? And so, you know, what this slide is, is really designed to do is to give us a, a juxtaposition or the start of a juxtaposition of what public image is versus what it potentially can be as it, you know, as it could be applied as running adjunct to our membership teams. I think it is safe to say that public image is a developing area in Rotary. Um, you know, and in, in, in fairness, uh, it hasn't been um, a huge focus uh, at the higher levels of Rotary um, for a very long time. I mean, I, I certainly think that there's a lot of emphasis on it today um, but we're still having some difficulty in even defining what the job description looks like. I think there is a lack of understanding of the potential power of the position of a public image chair and a public image team. And our current public image efforts are limited and, and not really uh, well thought out. Um, I, I really debated with myself on um, whether to uh, throw up some, some images um, at this point to show some of our club's efforts in, in public image. Um, and I really decided against it because I didn't want to you know, call any uh, clubs out specifically. Um, <laughs> I did want to share um, you know, one, one image uh, that I ran across. It was um, a, a, a club 
um, had, uh, you know, the, their satellite club had an evening meeting and the, the photo collage was, uh, you know, it, it, it was captioned, um, you know, fun at our, our Rotary Club meeting. And one of the images in the photo collage I was, um, you know, a table of people at the meeting, which, you know, that's, that's kind of a normal picture. But what was striking about it was that um, it, it, it truly was a table of grumpy men. Uh, it, it was, uh, everybody had a frown on their face. Um, one of the gentlemen had his, had his face, I mean, this is the image that you saw, was the face in the face. I mean, that's exactly what you saw. The, the gentleman sitting next to him, this is what you saw. And I, I'm not overstating that. I mean, it was, it was arms crossed, face down, and, and a, a super grumpy look. And so, you know, what, what that told me was that, okay, yeah, I mean, we, th this is good. We've got, you know, people taking uh, pictures of, of the meeting, but we didn't really have someone that was adept at, at analyzing those pictures and looking at it from a public image standpoint and, and saying, you know, to themselves, um, is, is this the image that we want to portray um, to not only our own members that weren't at that meeting, but to the rest of the world? Um, and, and I think it's safe to say uh, that, that none of us, um, you know, as, as public image professionals would um, have been okay with that, uh, you know, being the messaging for our club. Um, and, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm glad I, I'm not going to uh, show that image and hopefully you guys uh, got the imagery from uh, you know what I was able to articulate um so w what this you know sort of uh, journey and getting myself up to speed um you know got me to think about is you know really uh, an aspirational vision of what it can be what can our public image efforts look like and how can it ultimately benefit our membership retention and our membership attraction? So I, I don't know if um, everybody knows this or not, but Rotary International appoints five regional, um, you know, AKA zone positions. Um, we all know about our Rotary coordinators. Uh, you know, our, our Rotary coordinators are, uh, you know, really have a, their emphasis is on membership. We of course know about our Rotary Foundation coordinators. Um, we now have, of course, Rotary Public Image Coordinators. Uh, we have Endowment Major Gift Advisors and in Polio Now Coordinators. Um, so if, if you look at this, you, you know, it, it, it's safe to say that Rotary International puts a huge emphasis on public image. Um, but for whatever reason, that has not translated down to our clubs and, and, and frankly, to our, our districts either. So what does RI say about public images job description? Um, it, it talks about helping members tell Rotary's story in a compelling way and guide them in their marketing, media outreach, and social media campaigns. And, you know, something struck me, you know, whenever I, I was reading this, um, I, I think when we're looking at, at that, you know, essentially mission statement, it, you know, it, it gives us clear direction that we're supposed to be as you know, the public image staff helping our members and our clubs and our districts do this function. But you know, when I'm at training events, really the way it's couched is more in terms of, of a personal uh, ask. It, it's you know, tell your Rotary story. Well, I mean, the unfortunate fact is that you know, everyone in Rotary isn't necessarily adept at telling their Rotary story, as evidenced by, you know, a lot of the material that I've seen put out there. Um, so, you know, I, I think the message is that we have to be, um, number one, we have to, to staff these positions uh, with qualified people, and then we have to be super intentional with uh, how we tell our Rotary story. It's not just enough to have one, it's how we portray it. So it goes on to say, and I'm sorry how jumbled up this is, um, this is kind of you know, how, it, uh, it, how it came to us, um, but it's, 
you know, it's the share rotary story and reasonable impact with the media. Um, you know, we, we all know how difficult that is, uh, you know, to, to get media to pick anything up. Uh, promote the use of Rotary's online public image resources um, and brand awareness. Advise clubs and districts on how to implement and regionalize. And publicize the role of Rotary uh, and its members in, in polio eradication. Um, so those are, are really good, broad-based directives, but I, I still don't necessarily think it does an adequate job of saying, okay, what, what's the position supposed to look like? What do the subcommittees look like? So I poured over just dozens and dozens of uh, club and district uh, in, you know, zone resources from all over the United States. And really what I kind of, I kind of sketched out was what's the dream structure? I mean, if, if we had a fully functioning, robust public image in our, our district and our club levels, what would it look like? And so, you know, th this, this top bar, what that is, is it's essentially, it's just saying, okay, um, it, it's either the district level executive committee, club executive uh, committee. And, and I think these job descriptions can translate across the, the different levels of, of Rotary. But it, it's clear that we need a public image chair. And I think all too often with, with public image, uh, especially we have, you know, we've been okay with just staffing it with a chair and then calling it a day. Um, you know, there, there's, there aren't robust subcommittees, um, even if, you know, a club does have a chair, you know, there, there aren't people working as a team to support public image. And so the, you know, in my estimation, the, you know, the obvious subcommittees would be um, folks that are good at graphics. Um, you know, not just anybody that's going to throw, uh, you know, a bulletin together or a one pager together, uh, you know, and, and we need people that are adept at social media, um, you know, not just people that are going to post whatever, but people that understand how it works. Um, you know, we, uh, we see very often, um, you know, clubs have a meeting and, you know, the, their one post is, you know, maybe a, a shot of the crowd, maybe a shot of the speaker, very static looking. And it's, you know, it, it's shared on the club's Facebook page, which is not going to get any reach outside of the people that are uh, watching that club's Facebook page. That's it. I mean, there, there, there's no coordinated effort to uh, tag or to, you know, share, have the individual members um, share those posts on their own page. Um, websites. That's another place that public image should be in, involved in. Um, I, I will, uh, you know, and I, I don't know how many webmasters I, I have on the call, and this is certainly not intended to disparage webmasters, but, um, you know, folks that are adept at designing a web page are not necessarily adept at the content. You know, it, it's not necessarily going to be presented in a, a, a favorable way that's going to, you know, stimulate your current membership and attract others. So public image should be involved in the content on web pages. Um, of course, uh, to the extent that it's available, um, you know, media and uh, public relations subcommittee, um, you know, if uh, folks are still doing, you know, bulletins, and it's going to be a good idea to have somebody, um, you know, good from that public image team helping support those efforts. And then, of course, uh, photographic, um, you know, somebody that's good at photography, good at capturing action shots, not necessarily these, you know, static shots that we uh, regularly see. So in looking at the, the potential contributions, a robust public image team can prepare quality graphic assets to support club communications and emphasis on quality. Uh, you know, not just throwing something together, but thinking it through. What is the imagery that we want to project? Um, you know, what are we trying to communicate? Making it intentional. Uh, select and manage social media assets. So again, rather than the photo dump in the uh, example that I provided, um, you know, having someone from that public image team screen the photographs and, and you know, perhaps crop or, um, you know, emphasize or, you know, photo, you know, enhance it through Photoshop or whatever. I mean, 
use that, use those basic assets and, and make them better. Um, and again, as mentioned before, assist with the website and the social media channels. Liaison with media outlets. Um, and of course, the, the bulletin and, and all club communication support. Um, one thing that's heavily underutilized is video assets. Um, it, you know, if you've been paying attention at all to what's popular in, in social media, it's reels and TikToks. And if we're going to message appropriately as clubs and as districts, um, we've got to get in the game with, uh, with those video assets. And of course, um, this one, I, I, I'm going to spend you know, quite a bit of time on, on the next one. That's providing public image advice and support for service projects and fundraisers. And the value adds for clubs and districts in adopting a more robust approach to public image is it expands the engagement offerings for members. Um, you know, as mentioned before, not everybody wants the admin load of being a club secretary or, you know, dealing with, uh, you know, DACDB on membership or, you know, getting involved in, in the numbers or planning a fundraiser for, you know, foundation. But it, if you offer to the club members, uh, you know, and talented people around your districts and say, um, yeah, we, you know, we need somebody that is good at Canva that can help us with, you know, th these graphical elements, um, you know, get people that are interested in learning some stuff about or that may already have some talents in, uh, you know, in video production, all of those, those sorts of things open up new pathways for our current members to engage. It will absolutely improve quality of club and public facing content um, because right now, I mean, if, if you look at the public facing content out there, it's not good. And, and that, that's not only bad for attraction, it's also bad for retention. I mean, if, if you're not delivering a great public image, it's not going to be motivational for your current members either. It will effectively communicate positive aspects of the club experience, as I was saying, to current and future members. And ultimately, what we want it to do is enhance <laughs> member retention. So I'm going to do a case study here. I, I, was, um, I was fortunate to be able to be a discussion leader for uh, the president-elect at Carolina's Pets um, this past weekend. And, you know, when, um, when I got to the public image uh, section, you know, I was searching for ways to really facilitate that discussion, uh, you know, rather than make it a lecture. And so I just threw it out to the president elect, um, you know, tell me about one of your projects and let's break it down in terms of what you did and then what it could look like with a robust public image bend to it. And so, um, I mean, the, the first example that was thrown out was right out of central casting. I mean, it was perfect. It was, uh, you know, one of these little libraries. That's the image that, um, you know, I have up in front of you. And, you know, when I asked the gentleman to describe, uh, you know, what exactly, uh, the, you know, they did to get this project off the ground, um, you know, and to see it to its conclusion, what I heard was, you know, the same story that you would hear um, from almost every club in North America. And it looked something like this. It was a very typical stage of production. Um, they did a district grant to fund the construction. Uh, they solicited their membership for books. They procured the supplies for building it out. Uh, they constructed it and placed the libraries. And then they did one social media post showing the results. And the, the social media posts, um, I, I mean, you know, I'm not going to pick on the club, uh, you know, specifically, but I asked him, you know, what's your club's Facebook page? And we looked it up, you know, we, we just pulled it up and it was the, the very common, um, that's not the image that I showed you before, but it was very similar to the image I showed you where there was a picture of the library full of books. Great. There was... The, uh, the folks that showed up that day to put it in the ground, standing there, you know, arm in arm. I mean, everybody's seen that picture a, a gazillion times. Um, and, and then a, a really short blurb on, on what it looked like. Now let's, 
let's contrast that with what that project could have looked like with a, a really public image slant to it. And what I'm about to show you is, is really got what got pulled out of the facilitation of talking about this, this particular project. So let's go to that aspirational what if world. So how about when the project coordinator has this idea, the project coordinator meets with the public image team and they simply have a conversation to learn more. The public image team then prepares a graphical one page uh, explanation to really sell the idea of the project to their own club and to the executive committee, who's obviously going to make decisions on the district grant. Public Image then promotes the plan on social media. Now note that nothing's happened yet, but we can take this opportunity to put out into the world what's coming. So it plants the seed. It, it, it puts out to our club members publicly and potentially to people that could be involved in Rotary that this is coming. We then solicit membership and the community for books. What this particular club did is what 99.9% .9 of clubs would have done. They asked their members to bring books. But what if we went out and asked for community partnership? So the people that weren't necessarily involved in Rotary yet, we solicit books from them as well. We photograph and video documentation of all phases of construction and placement. So we have a video of our folks at Home Depot shopping for supplies. We have video or pictures of our folks in whatever garage they're in, <coughs> pardon me, constructing it. And we post these things all throughout the development. Then once it's in the community, we post a video interview of someone that's impacted in the community to show the true beneficiaries and the impact. And then we communicate all of this to our club members in our bulletin, in an email, and at a club meeting. So that is a very different approach. <clears throat> Sorry, I think I swallowed a cat. Ah, there we go. All right, but at any rate, um, that is the, uh, you know, I, I think that really captures the essence of what a good public image campaign can be to run adjunct to a, a very cool and a very necessary and a very impactful project. I love this quote that I ran across, um, you know, whenever I was uh, researching for this presentation. And, and it said, keeping the member in Rotary means keeping Rotary in the member. And guys, public image can play such an important role in doing exactly that. Um, I'm done with the presentation. You know, I know we, we got done uh, fairly quickly and I'm definitely willing to um, take some uh, comments and questions if you guys are so inclined. And I hope the final message, you know, if you see up here at the top, what it says is elevate. And what I'm asking, you know, the ask from all of you as folks that are interested in public image and hold, you know, decision-making positions in your clubs and districts is take this message back to your clubs and districts that we have to elevate public image if we're serious about membership growth. And, you know, I, I know that we have uh, some amazing folks that are really, really dedicated to membership, but they need help. You know, the, the numbers don't lie. You know, with all of the emphasis, I mean, 2015, that is the year that we switched our primary focus to membership and Rotary. And we're still behind the curve when it comes to attraction and attrition. I think we can close the gap if we elevate public image. And that's my message to you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Chris. Um, we'll take questions in a minute, Chris, but whoops, can you put your slides back on and back up to the little rotary box? Oh, sure. Hold on.
What did you want to see the last one again? I want to see the box. It's about five slides from the end. Oh, the job descriptions. Yeah. No, the box, the, the library box. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can get now, it. If you had brought in public image from the beginning, what would you think that public image could do to this box before they put it, before they even started construction? How could they help? Anybody? Uh, maybe, Un yeah, maybe, maybe make it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> could be aesthetically pre pleasing. And, and, and maybe put else? the word on it somewhere. <laughs> That's an old logo, guys. Does nobody recognize the old logo? I mean, that would be the first thing that they would say is, hey, let's make sure we've got a good logo and what can we make it out of to make it sturdy enough and where can we put it? Um, so we've got something really cool and it's the old logo. And somebody in, in the presentation here said, what about the club's name? So for sure, put a little bit of more advertising there. Anybody else have comments or, yes, this will be recorded. We are recording it and Ashley will have it out on our social media, um, RI Zones, Public Image, PI, I think it is. Um, and it'll be up there probably tomorrow. I want to introduce Joe Piscor. He wasn't there at the beginning. Joe, give a, a wave. He is another one like Ken who will be rolling off and he's done a yeoman's job for us. He, and he is great with video and photographs. Anything else? Any questions? Let me bring up if I can share my screen. And we have a couple people with their hands raised, uh, okay. Billy. Go ahead. Who? Jim, Jim uh, Kirkpatrick has a question. Go ahead, Hamilton. And then, uh, Carol. Yeah. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I thought that was a great presentation. And um, Chris, one of the best things Rotary did several years ago was change the logo to have the word Rotary next to the symbol. So the world knows we're not Buddhists, uh, the wheel of life or some other thing. And then... But at the same time, they did people of action, three words to dispel the usual image of people sitting around a table eating a meal or presenting an award or whatever it might be. And I think what I've found is that the rotary as a word, a name, many people know it. They see the signs in the towns. They, it's been in popular literature. It comes up sometimes. What they don't know is have a clue, what is that? <laughs> You know, and I found that time and again, I think we have brand recognition in terms of a name. It'd be like if people say, yeah, I heard of Coca-Cola, but they had no idea it was a soft drink. So getting past that, I mean, I even myself, I use the example when I used to talk to non-Rotarians, but how many times you've driven by a rotary sign, and I did the same every day of my life, knowing that it was a service club, but just until my 40s and early 50s, not really until I went to a meeting, I, I had no idea. I knew I knew the word Kiwanis and lions, um, but it seems like for public image, it's still a challenge, the people of action and getting that out so people know what Rotary means. That's a tough one. Yeah, and every time we put a post out there, it should be a picture of action, should tell what's in the, what's happening in the picture, and then bring it back to Rotary. Why is Rotary doing this? And then make the ask, come join us. Wouldn't you like to be part of this? Every time you post something. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I, I come from the newspaper world. So I, I work with words. And what I would add to your presentation, uh, Chris, is that little mailbox could be a story. You could first post a photograph of the stick in the ground. No action there. And then you could say, this is going to be a really busy place soon. What's it going to be? Put it in a question. Then take another picture in a couple of days that has the box on top of it. Then take a picture of the rotary symbol on it. You know, sort of stretch this story out. I hadn't thought of sort of advancing our projects like that. But I think that's what people get involved in is stories. And that's what public image really is, is the story of Rotary, the story of you and me and all of us, why we're here. 
Absolutely. Thank you, Carol. And Carol, you can you can also take that to not just do it as you go along and tell him that story, but once you have the have it completed, you can now put all of that together and tell the whole story again. Uh, so it's a redo the story and use you it know, in multiple areas like that. I Absolutely. just I just um, come to realize there's something called a reel. So I'm trying to find out how to do a reel. It is hard for an uh, image for a. Uh, um, technology immigrant like me to learn things like that. And, and Rotary doesn't help much, really. Well, you're, you're looking at Chris, who is a, um, a great videographer, and he knows how to put those still pictures together. And if he can make me do it, then you can do it too, Carol. Okay, Chris, so you're my man. A, a lesson. But you're let's see, we man. had them. Bill? Did you unmute yourself and you have your hand raised? Yeah, I, I was just going to point out a, a, a small thing I think we overlook sometimes in, in public image. It's a lot closer to home. Is what, What's your club look like when somebody walks in there for the first time? We, we have a lot of visitors, potential members we think about, but you also have visitors, maybe somebody who comes to hear the speaker or the guest speaker themselves. And there's an interesting statistic in sociology that says when people go to some place like a church, generally within five minutes, they've decided already if they want to come back again subconsciously. And a lot of that is, what is this place? Does it look friendly? Does it look professional? And the other example, Chris talked about Coca-Cola. If you go to a Walt Disney World site, one of their big places, there's a vice president for parking. He's a corporate officer because he's the first experience and the last experience you have. And we might think about that as you come in and leave our club meetings also, just a thought. Absolutely. If you, if any of you have been watching our map sessions, we have one once a month. I believe it's the second Monday. Patrick, correct me if I'm wrong, Chris. Okay, don't correct me. Oh, yeah. um, we had one recently where the gentleman said, your club should be like Cheers. Anybody remember the bar at Cheers? And the song that says, where everybody knows your name. And that's how you should feel um, when you come into that club is that everybody wants you there, everybody knows your name and they're all glad to see you. If you can do that, what a great thing that is. And then you pull the service in and give them all of them a job. And, oh, we have uh, Drew, I'm sorry, Drew, I didn't see you. Your hand blended into your wall. Uh, yeah, because I've got a lot of stickers on my guitar case. Um, <laughs> so I, I've, Chris, I have a question for you. Are you retired? Am I retired? No. <laughs> I haven't. <laughs> okay. No. There, I, I have a reason for asking this question. So, um, you know, Rotary Clubs in general um, are made up of a couple of different groups of people. There are people who have jobs and work for a living and do all kinds of other things and are there. Um, as a, you know, as a service arm. And then there are people who are retired who have a lot more time on their hands and can do a lot of these things that we're talking about. Um, but when it comes to public image, some of the things that tend to happen is the people who are retired tend to be the ones who are less adept at the technology side of things when it comes to digital marketing, to communicating out, to using Canva, to using um, to using Facebook, to using Instagram, TikTok, and things like that. Um, we've, um, we've even experienced issues where people were, um, were upset when videos went on social media because they didn't want people to see what was, they didn't want to, uh, one person didn't want their employer to see them having a good time in this meeting that they were, that their employer was paying for them to be at. Um, you know, and it it seems absurd on some level, but on other levels, you know, those are the things, the realities that we have to deal with. Um, and so, one of the things that I think we need to we need to do as Rotarians, we need to be focused on getting some younger people in the club who um, who are professionals in their field. It'd be great to reach out to more marketing professionals. I own a marketing agency. I'm the PI chair for our club, but not every club has something like that. But also to be able to 
bring in the the retired members who have more time on their hands and be able to coach them into the things that that maybe they're not as up on that they could actually spend the time and help doing like going and getting the videos of this project that was going on and trying to um, to gather that content that maybe somebody like me who is busy running a company all day but has the technical know-how doesn't necessarily have the time to do. And so we need to be working together as a team instead of, you know, like one individual is in charge of this and they're, and they're just like tasked with all that stuff. Um, yeah. It, it, the, Drew, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to push back a little bit on, um, you know, the idea that, uh, you know, that only retired folks have the time to, you know, devote to um, public image. Um, you know, I'm a case in point, and you know, one of the reasons that I even agreed to be district governor is because I wanted to dispel the notion that uh, you know somebody that you know still works and and at the time had kids at home um, didn't have time to do it. I you know, and, and I thought um, you know no better way to do that than to be an example of it. Um, and I certainly wasn't the first, um, but it'd been several years. Uh, you know, actually, our our incoming director Patrick Eeks, who's, who's on the call, um, he was an example of it as well. You know, he he served as district governor um, and was able to do that with uh, you know young children at home and and you know all the while while he ran his company. Um, you know, and so I, I actually think that that public image is ideal for people uh, in that demographic. Um, you know, there, there are, are people that are, you know, there, there's 20 and 30 somethings that are doing this all day, every day for free for entertainment uh, purposes. I mean, they're putting together robust videos um, on TikTok and, and you know, and, and through reels, um, and, and they're doing that as a recreational activity. So, um, you know, and, and as far as uh, effectively using graphics through, you know, emojis or, you know, or, or whatever, I mean, Canva has enormous libraries, um, you know, they're throwing this stuff together, they're, they're making memes. Um, and, and that's really all that we're, you know, we're talking about doing. Um, and and I, I think it's, it's awesome. And of course, you being the marketing guy, you got, you know, put in the, the public image, um, you know, position. And, and what I would ask you is that, you know, on that aspirational organizational chart that I showed you, do you have that? You know, have you recruited those folks to help you, uh, you know, with your function. Because if you're the public image chair in your club, um, you know, as I illustrated in, you know, in, in terms of the the aspirational goals of what that position could be, it's too much work for you for any one person. I don't care if you were retired or not. It's too much. I mean, that, that'd be a full time job and then some. So, you know, we we've got to get away from this idea of committees of one. Um, that should not exist in Rotary. There should be no committees of one. Um, so you have to, you know, you, you really have to build out that team, um, you know, and 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 make it what it should be, not what it has been. Well, I, I think that that was part of my point. There was that um, that we need to be bringing more people in to these to these committees to work together as Rotarians. Everybody in the club should have a place to belong and a part to play. There should be something for everybody to do. Um, and I think a lot of times people feel like, you know, once they're past a certain threshold, and I'm not saying there's any intelligence level or anything like that, but once they're past a thir certain threshold, it's like, oh, I can't learn any of this stuff because it's it's too complicated. But, you know, people can. Um, the Another thing that, and this was brought to my attention by city council here recently, um, going back to the types of projects that we do as Rotarians, you know, in, in the community and bringing in public image. Um, it's really great that they made a library box, but, and I'm not picking on this one club in particular, but did they ask anybody in the community if they needed a library box? And that's not saying they didn't, but I think one of the things that, that, a lot of times we as Rotarians assume we want to do a service project and we forget to check with the people who it will affect whether they actually wanted that project. And if you can work hand in hand with people in your community, then you can bring more people back into Rotary and we can help achieve some of those diversity, equity, and inclusion 
projects or or not projects, but goals that has been set by our Rotary International um, president by going out and reaching other people in the community and working together with our communities. Absolutely. Anyway, that's all I've got to say there. Um, We have community assessment in our global grants and I wish that more districts would uh, include it in their district grants because, you know, we've been doing dictionaries, let's say. Well, we finally asked the school if they wanted dictionaries two years ago and they said, really not, we'd rather this. And so we went with that, but really assessments necessary. Jack, we got Jack and then Kevin. Thanks, Billy. Um, I too am in the, the market again. I'm a president of a tourism agency. We market and promote all tourism based business. But look at your clubs, see if they have somebody with that type of background. If they don't, when we're looking for new members, go find those folks that have those skill sets, bring them in to teach four, five, six, ten different people some of those things that they can use and, and it will make your job so easy getting people trained to, to help you and everybody take a piece. Correct about the it's a team. It can't be done by one. It just can't. And Jack, I want to I, I want to um, say something um, to that because uh, you know while while I definitely think it's good to have a, a true professional, fill a spot, you know, like, it's great to have a CPA be your treasurer, right? Um, But, you know, Rotary is also about opening opportunities that you might not otherwise have. Um, I am not a marketing professional. I'm a lawyer. Um, You know, we we do real estate closings most of the day, but I am, I I love technology. Um, You know, I love playing around with video. I love learning video editing, you know, so, so Rotary is, is actually, um, you know, a place where you can try new things. So, so really, it's it, to me, it, it's it's not as much about finding someone that fits the job description already because it's on their resume. It's it's about finding somebody that's interested in it and getting um, you know, giving them that avenue to. to I agree learn with it. you, Chris. I agree with you 100. percent But bring someone in who can teach them. Maybe he doesn't want to be a member, but I bet you they'll come and help you. And yeah. get these folks trained to make it great in your clubs. That's a great. I'm sure that would be awesome. Kevin, can we can we get you to weigh in? Yeah, I've got uh, two points. Um, we've been blessed in my club this year with about a dozen new members, and we have worked hard at club assemblies that we do once a quarter to take time to review all of our committees. What are the opportunities for all of our new members to jump in on? And we've got some that have taken over a couple of our committees that are just doing fantastic jobs and the ones who've been doing it forever are now able to take a back seat and advise where they need to. My second point is on the the little free libraries is my club did seven of them, then we've added another two since we did that. Those kinds of projects are ones you can bring up and do another news story every year and get some new kids in front of it. We placed all of our strategically with partners, it's at banks, at libraries, at the YMCA, in communities where the need was there, where they just, they can't get to the library at all. And partnering is one of the big things that we're trying to push, I know, in our district and in our clubs. Hey, is it Tyra? It is Tyra, how are you? I'm fine. Kevin, you are a straight man for me. We in my club, which is Tyson's in 7610, have eight blessing boxes. It with uh, we uh, collaborate with Salvation Army and uh, senior residences, et cetera. We did a survey and understood, particularly during the pandemic, people who were homeless needed things like socks and uh, deodorant, et cetera. So every place we have a blessing box, we've collaborated with an institution in that community to understand what the needs were. That that organization also monitors the blessing boxes and contacts us when we need to refill or we need to change what's in there. So what I like and what you said, Kevin, is an ongoing thing. We have different stories. We can interview some of the people that are being blessed. We interview, we uh, have stories of building the blessing boxes. So um, I think 
we can take an idea, we, we were presented with an idea and explode it into a project that you can tell many stories about. And that's all I was going to say. Thank you. Okay, we're just about come to the end and I want to introduce to you the team so that you can contact them if you need to. Uh, this is the new team starting in um, July 1, but we are actually working together to prepare to teach district leaders in April in uh, Glen Allen. So of course I'm on there. Dawn could not be here today. Chris was your presenter today. Taylor is in, uh, I think Chris is district, but she's in a virtual uh, club. So is Felicia and Hamilton is right near us in the Glen Allen area. So thank you so much for tuning in today. Chris, do you wanna close? Oh no, I, I think I've yapped enough. Thanks so much for uh, allowing me to, to do this though. I appreciate you. It was great. Uh, this will be the recording will be up on RI Zones 3334 forward slash BI probably sometime tomorrow. And we appreciate y'all. Good night. Thank you and good night. Good night. No, I want to just, oh, Tyra's gone. I was going to say something. Okay, I'm hey, Billy, can you leave the deck open for a second? Uh, Marshall's testing something. Yeah, I'm just stopping the recording. Okay.